What's up YouTube? Today I'm sculpting Loki and turning him into a figurine with real hair. Are you ready? Let's go! Hey, it's me ZW, the accountant head sculptor. Yes, I have an accountancy degree lying around somewhere but that's not important because today we want to celebrate the newly released Disney Plus series, Loki. Let's start sculpting. This time, I really wanted to challenge myself, and since Loki is such an expressively sinister character, I decided to add teeth to this head sculpt. Something like this. So I went to find a bunch of references with him smiling, which was easy because they always smile for the camera. But I don't want a happy Loki, I want an evil Loki. You know how he's always chin down and looking forward? Yeah, that's the expression I want, with an evil smile. Of course, before we could insert the teeth, we need to open his mouth. What? It may seem easy, but it's one of my first time doing such an expressive sculpture, so I'm actually really nervous. There are so many different muscles moving. First, your cheeks go up, your eyes squint a little, your chin moves down and backwards. It's so different from the neutral expression that I'm used to sculpting. For the hair, Hot Toys has actually released a bunch of Lokis throughout the years, but I feel that all these sculpted long hair just don't fall naturally on the shoulders. They are actually third party head sculpts with rooted hair, but the hairline just don't look good at all. So what I'm gonna do is to combine sculpted hair with a half root at the back to get the ultimate combination. A similar sculpted hairline with naturally resting real hair. Another reason why I decided to add teeth is because a smirking Loki has already been sculpted by a super talented sculptor called Vimal Kaketa. And it has also been printed and painted by Eleven. No way I'm gonna compete with such a dream team. So I gotta one up them and do something so different that I can just blame it all on its complexity if I would fail. <laughs> Like I've mentioned, I'm sculpting only the front part of the hair to achieve a smooth transition from the forehead to the hairline. It's really a very mindless thing to do, just random strokes over and over and over again. No, not the kind of stroking, it, it's more like a series of repetitive motion and your hands get sore, but the end result is so beautiful. You are creepy as shit. From what I've observed, Tom Hiddleston likes to put his tongue against his teeth when he smiles. So I really wanted to replicate the effect on this sculpture as well, and that's exactly what I did. After adding paws, we are ready to prep it for print. What that means is basically removing everything except the head and add a hole into it. I will go through how I did that in the next video, so stay tuned. Now we just need to export it into preform and it takes just a few clicks to get it ready to print. Shout out to Form Labs for creating such a user-friendly and reliable printer. It literally saves me so much time by eliminating all the researching and troubleshooting nonsense. We just gotta generate support and leave it to print overnight. Yo, if you made it this far, you must be a big fan of Loki. Well, me too. Promise me, stay to the end of the video to see the results for yourself. If you're happy with how it turned out, give this video a like. Let's get this out there to more Loki fans. Painting is where the magic happens. It brings so much life into the sculpture, when done right of course. If you're interested in the basic steps of painting a head, I made a summary in my spider net video. You can check it out later but I'll show you the process anyway. While you watch me paint, I want to share a secret that will save you so much time when dealing with mistakes. Basically, painting involves stacking layers of different colors from beige, red, tans, shadows and so on. But what if you make a mistake? If you are fast enough, you could wipe it off before the paint dries. But sometimes when you wipe a little too hard, the previous layer comes off as well. So what you gonna do? Restart? <coughs> Introducing Mr. Hobby Super Clear. This is a lifesaver. Basically, it's a transparent coat of paint that will protect your colors. So before moving on to a different color, make sure to spray on a layer of clear coat. That way, when you make a mistake, you can wipe it in peace without worrying that you might ruin the previous layer. This is especially important when painting eyes because it requires the most layering in one given area. First, you need some gray for the entire eyeballs Yes, it's grey, not white. 
After that, you'll need to outline the irises with some brown. And depending on the eye color of the subject, you add the respective color. In this case, it's blue. After that blue, you gotta add a pupil. And I didn't show it here, but I did add a lightened layer of blue as highlights around the pupil. That's what, five layers? Five potential areas of making mistakes. And don't forget, there are two eyes. That's 10 chances of error. So can you imagine how frustrating a mistake would be if there wasn't a safeguard in between each layer? Thanks to Mr. Hobby Super Clear. Now that painting is done, time to bring Loki's hair to life. I've gone through this in my WandaVision video, but this was a lot simpler because I didn't have to root the entire head. Starting from the bottom, add a little glue, then add a little lamp fur. Repeat until you're happy with the results. Well, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And if you think that we have reached the end of customization, you were right. Because I was ready to end it right here, but then this happened. Make my helmet or I will kill you. So I went to Google Loki crown 3D model and I found this. Today, we are gonna be building Loki's crown. Well, you can use the code UJ at checkout to save a percentage off. So the chipscape in me couldn't resist and I bought it, but it was not the most accurate. The shape is a bit off and I think that it needs to be protruding out a little bit while these two sides should be moved inwards. So I modified it to fit the head printed it out with a bunch of stuff unrelated to this video. Leave a comment if you can tell what those weapons are. Anyway, I painted the crown and now it's officially done. And I really love how evil he looks. The hair is definitely so much better, even though the back is a bit messy, but out of sight, out of mind. And I couldn't afford hot toys, so this is just a suit made by POP Toys. So was the cane. I hope you've enjoyed this video and remembered our promise. Click the like button if you're happy with how it turned out. Next week will be the end of my Power Rangers sculpting series. I will also talk about how I started sculpting. In the meantime, this is my Falcon and Winter Soldier video. Or if you want to watch my other customs, this is the playlist. And I will see you next week. Bye.